Okay, so in this problem, we're told a 27 kilogram chandelier hangs from a ceiling on a vertical four meter long wire. A, what horizontal force would be necessary to displace its position 0.15 meters to one side? B, what will be the tension in the wire? So the first thing as always is you wanna draw, uh, draw what's going on. So I went ahead and drew uh, the chandelier before. So imagine this box right here is our chandelier. Uh, we know if we draw the free body diagram, it's going to have uh, the force due to gravity pointing straight down, and then the tension is the cord holding it up. And then we're basically trying to find the horizontal force necessary to displace it uh, 0.15 meters. So if you imagine it like this, we're going to push the chandelier this way, and the cord's going to look something like this. And so essentially, uh, I went ahead and drew a triangle like this to make it easier to see. But when we displace it 0.15 meters, this distance of this triangle is 0.15 uh, meters right here, right? Because all we're doing is moving it to the left or right. In this case, I chose left, uh, 0.15 meters. And basically, we're going to be trying to find the force uh, that's necessary to actually do this. So I'm going to walk you through how to solve it and explain it along the way. So the first thing we need to find in order to solve this is this angle theta right here. And you'll see why that's necessary in a second, uh, but let's just solve for it first. So how are we gonna do that? So we know that this is 0.15 meters right here of our triangle, because we're basically trying to find the angle that it's turned, okay? And uh, we know this cable, I didn't label it in the beginning, but this cable is four meters long. So this is still four, to me, uh, four meters long. The, uh, the length of the cable doesn't change. So redrawing our triangle over here looks something like that, where this is 90 degrees, this is theta, this is four meters, and this is 0.15. If we want to find theta there, uh, we can use trick. And we would use the sine function. So you should know that the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite of the angle over the hypotenuse. So, Katoa. so the opposite is 0.15 uh, divided by 4. And to find theta, you would just take the arc sine of both sides to get it. So just writing that out there. Uh, yeah, you just take the arc sine of both sides. And you'll get 2.149 uh, degrees, since we're working with degrees. Um, and that's your angle theta. So now that we have theta, I'm going to show you why it was actually necessary. And the, uh, the reason why we're doing that is because uh, we're going to be summing the forces in the y direction here uh, in order to actually solve for this tension T. So if we can find or sum the forces in this direction, uh, we can solve for T. That's how you basically solve for any force uh, in a problem like this by summing the forces. So uh, we're going to sum the forces in the y direction. So sum of the forces in the y, we obviously know that it's going to be like a still system, right? So uh, we're imagining it's still, so this equals ma, y, but a in the y is zero. So some of the forces in the y equals zero, since we're dealing with a still system here. And then we just want to sum the forces in the y. So uh, when I'm referring to y, I'm referring to everything along this axis here. So uh, your two forces would be mg and the y component of this tension force, which is uh, right here. So your Y component of this tension, which you could just call FT of Y, or I'm going to call it T of Y, actually. So the tension in the Y direction. Um, and then you just sum them. So MG is going downward, so it's negative. So minus MG. And then T sub Y is going upwards, so like this. So you, if it's upwards, I like to denote it as positive. If it's downwards, it's negative. Uh, but moving this to the other side, moving MG, we know that the y component of the tension is equal to uh, mass, it's mass times gravity, okay? Now, what is the mass times the gravity of the block? Uh, its mass is 27 kg, they tell us that, uh, whereas gravity is the acceleration due to gravity, it's a constant, which is 9.8. Plug that in to get the y component of our tension. So T sub y is 268, or 264.6. Uh, newtons and now that we have this uh, we're actually solving for b first so i'm doing this to solve for b first just because it's easier but if you have the y component of or just a component of uh, a force you can solve for 
uh, the main component by uh, doing this. So redrawing the, uh, this triangle here like this now, so not for direction. Let me actually just draw it a bit better. Not for direction, but based on the forces, right? So this is T, the hypotenuse here right, on our drawing. The Y component is this, this is T sub Y because it's in the Y. And then we'll call this T sub X. And so uh, we know T sub Y and we know this angle here, theta, which is, we'll just call it theta here. Um, to solve for T, we know that the Y component, or I'll just do it out. So uh, we know that the cosine of an angle, in this case theta, is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is T sub Y over T. So so Katoa adjacent over hypotenuse. So multiplying both sides by T, you get T sub Y is T times the cosine of theta. But we don't want T sub Y, we want T. So to get T by itself, you have T sub Y divided by the cosine of theta. So if we have the Y component, which we just found right, right here, uh, we can solve for T just by doing the cosine of this angle theta. So it's really useful to draw triangles like this to make it to solve for it. So uh, T sub Y was 264.6 divided by the cosine of the angle, which was 2.149. Go ahead and divide that there. 2.149. You will get T is equal to 264.7, uh, we'll say 79. So about... 264.8 uh, and then this is going to be uh, obviously newtons so t is 264.8 newtons all we did was plug it in there and then this would be your b so for b they wanted us to find uh, they wanted us to find the tension in the wire so this would be your tension in the wire t and now for a it's really easy to solve once, uh, once you have B. So uh, A is what horizontal force would be necessary to displace this. So uh, horizontal, obviously we're talking about the X. And so we're gonna push it this way. And so uh, we can think about it that the tension is gonna have to counteract this force uh, that we're pushing it with. So whatever the X component of the tension is, in this case, is equal to that value to push it to the side, right? Because to be able to hold it up, we have to go against that force. So T sub X is really what they're looking for here. And to find the X component of this, looking back at our triangle here, uh, you would just use sine. So uh, you know the sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So let me go ahead and do this. Um, opposite is uh, T sub X over the hypotenuse, which is T. So uh, sine of theta equals t sub x over t, right, opposite over hypotenuse. So you just multiply both sides by t. And then your x component is just the t value, which we just found, 264.8 times the sine of your angle. In this case, it is 2.149. Multiplying that out, and I'm going to use the exact value here, 2.149. You get it equals... 9.929 so basically the force required to push it this distance right 0.15 meters is your t sub x which is 9 point what does it say 9.93 uh, and then since we're dealing with force it's newtons so uh, this would be your answer to a or how much force is required for that and then the uh, the tension in the cord is this value right here uh, but yeah so uh, just a quick recap all we did was uh, find this angle theta here, uh, sum the forces up to solve for T sub Y, uh, and then all we had to do was just manipulate it as a triangle using trig to get each of the components or, or the magnitude and then the components. Uh, but yeah, so keep in mind this is B and this is A. And uh, yeah, so those are your answers and hopefully you found this video useful.